Welcome to the I Work For Me podcast. I'm Melina Lewis, an author, marketer, yoga teacher, and mom, and I'm passionate about people who have created their own business opportunities and who love the freedom of working for themselves. listening to Lift Your Spirits with Dina Marie every Friday here on 1150 AM KKNW. I'll be introducing you to fascinating people, fun places to visit, and activities that are guaranteed to lift your spirits. Betty Mathers? Hello. Woo, woo, I just had some coffee. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Set still. <laughs> I've been up since three. It's a beautiful, beautiful night. The moon and the sun and just And a gorgeous came morning. Up. We just saw Seattle like totally light, get the light shining on the buildings. There are some magical moments for Seattle in the morning when we get to look westward rather than east. And the sunrise was gleaming off of the Columbia Tower, which looked like kind of it looked like it was on fire. It but, did. but it wasn't. I took a picture. <laughs> okay, everyone. It wasn't. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. And it's been super cold, but super sunny. It's been a whole week of uh, me loving being outside and enjoying nature. Working off the Thanksgiving holiday. The, uh, feast. I stayed home all by myself. I'm saying the feast in general, like you know. I didn't feast at all. I cleaned you could out feast my closets. Yourself. <laughs> What's the matter with I, that? I followed the rules and stayed home yeah, by myself. Yeah, so did we. We oh. still feasted. But I'm by myself. So what did I have? Oh, I didn't eat anything. I just. <laughs> so I guess I. Dina. I don't know what happened. That day was just kind of my day, and I did what I wanted, and I got so much done. All right. Well, Thanksgiving <laughs> to you per se. Thanksgiving to all of us. Well, to yourself then, and then to everybody else. Yes. Okay. A year of gratitude attitude mm-hmm. is what we need right now. <laughs> yep. But we're going to go somewhere super warm and lovely. And joining me this morning is Melina Lewis. Good morning, Melina. Good morning, Dina. <laughs> Thank you so much. So where are you? I'm in Cape Town, South Africa. So at the southern tip, like literally the southern tip of Africa. So yes, it is our summer at the moment. Um, But as I was saying, we've got a bit of wind, but it bodes well in that it's bringing nice hot weather and warm ocean. So um, yeah, it'll be it'll be great in kind of just in time for everyone to kind of come on holiday. So yeah. Oh, yay. Well, I'm imagining myself at the beach right now, but not freezing. (laughs) So um, I would love for you to tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Sure. Thank you. Um, So I am a writer. And I write uh, fictional novels. I have an adult novel that I've published and I'm working on my second one, which will hopefully be out in February 2021. Yeah, that is the year that comes after this one. Um, And then I've also got a kids trilogy, which is kind of for your middle grade to kind of YA age group. So like I'd say like 11 to 14, 15 year olds. And that's called Libertalia. And it's um, three books, uh, one after the other. And it's about four young kids that live in South Africa and um, the adventures that they go on. So kind of very much in the adventure genre and light and fun. And yeah, and they go to like Zimbabwe and they go to Madagascar and there's elements of pirates and treasure and yeah. So so that is my my love and my passion. But I'm also a... um, a marketer, communicator, that's like, you know, the day job. And uh, yeah, I do a bunch of things. So yeah, pretty busy. Yeah. And I I read, uh, it was probably three months ago when I read your a little bit about you, because I really wanted to make sure you were a good fit for the show and you were perfect because you reminded me of me raising my kids and you have two children. Yes. 
and you're a I dynamic do. woman and, and you want to be with your kids. So you, you choose professions where you can be more of a mom too. And we have delays uh, with our yeah, So if you absolutely. guys hear some, um, I, oops, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. There's a little delay, but it's not, it's not too bad. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I do have two kids. Um, my son is 12 and my daughter is 10 and um, they're at a lovely age, kind of primary school for us here. And, uh, but my son is getting very tweeny at the moment. <laughs> That's your um, <laughs> But they've just finished exams this week. So, oh my goodness, thank goodness. That is over and done with. And we will go on holiday at the end of next week as our big break is kind of in December, Jan. And, um, but yes, I wanted a life where I could be with my kids and I kind of do this crazy thing where I'm juggling work in and around kids and I sit in my car, I do these Zoom calls <laughs> at the moment and I'm in my car, I've like labeled it my mobile office, um, <laughs> but like people can see that I'm in my car, it's quite insane, yeah. I actually had a basket for my office stuff in the car and then I had food, water, you know, you had the whole thing and then I opened my trunk to every toy, every floaty thing, anything you could do to, you know, pull over, go skating, th throw a Frisbee. Back. I mean, my we did golf. <laughs> my trunk was full of so many fun things. But I wanted to be with my kids. And they, they're, you know, they're adults now, but they're my best friends. And it's it's really important to be with your children and engaged. Mm -hmm. mm. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I hope that I am engaged. Uh, there's a lot of kind of, just wait, just wait, let me send this email. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope that, yeah, at least the time spent will, will work out in the end. <laughs> it will. It always does. Uh, so I want to uh, talk about your first book. And first, before we bring yes. up the book, I want you to tell the story of how you got, how the, the light bulb went off and where. What were you doing? Okay. Mm. So I was running. So I am by by no means any kind of expert runner. I, I almost I always call myself a plodder, actually, because that, <laughs> that's more like my stride. It's slow, um, and and so I was plodding, and I was with three other friends of mine, and we would run kind of in and around Fishhook, which is the small kind of little seaside town where I live, and we kind of would run often in winter in the dark you know it would have rained the night before and so you kind of tend to run in the middle of the road you know it's a very small town so there's not a lot of traffic early like at 6am and stuff and it's dark and I was like oh wow this is you know this is like a little bit crazy to be running in the middle of the road and I actually then heard about a story where a runner was in Johannesburg and was actually hit by a car, you know, by a, a taxi, which um, a taxi here is kind of like a combi bus, uh, you know, like a 15 seater where a lot of people are kind of jump in that for their daily commute. And this taxi was trying to cut through the suburbs and hit this woman and killed her, unfortunately. And I was like, wow, that's so hectic. You know, what happens? Like, was she running with someone? What, what happened? And as I was running with my friends and trying not to think about my plodding so much, I, I started to think about what would happen, you know, if, if someone was killed in a situation and you're there, how does that affect you? What what happens to the people that they leave behind? What happens to their family and their friends? And that kind of that ripple effect that happens to, you know, one person is killed, but the ripple impact of that across many lives and how that affects different people differently. And so I started developing the story with every run, um, you know, kind of placing the characters and drawing them up in my head and then eventually the story kind of like it superseded my brain capacity and we went away for a weekend and I sat down and opened up my laptop and I you know my husband was like what are you doing and I was like I'm gonna write a book <laughs> and he went oh okay then um and I think he just turned and said come kids and out they went the door you know I think he thought I was absolutely nuts I'd finally lost it completely and um and that's kind of where it started and then it was just such a like it just it just rolled in terms of the journey in terms of actually thinking okay well maybe I should know about writing a book and you know you just kind of go on this learning trajectory that is amazing and and slowly built up the story yeah and uh yeah, I guess that's how it kind of started. Well, and I, it, it's 
the idea. I work with the chakras, and so the idea is in your head. And when you physically do something, and, and I tell people, just write something. Just start writing. Yeah. And I always, you could put the, the beginning at the end. I mean, you can m- move everything around later. But for now, yeah. just physically act on your ideas. And like you, I get my ideas when I'm running. So the back of my book was when I was exercising. So I love that about us that, you know, and I'm a, I call it trotting. <laughs> you call it, when I run, it's <laughs> trotting. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's a fast walk, but it, it, it really gets me grounded. And then all of a sudden I just get the, the lights turn on and I get these ideas, you know, and then physically, you know, opening your throat chakra, which is saying, hey, I'm going to write this book instead of just thinking about mm-hmm. it and then poo-pooing it and say, I don't want to do it or talking yourself out of it. And I love it because I also wrote a little kid's book. Um, it's a coloring book, Orange Angels, about death and, and crossing over and passing. Right. And I loved the idea of what, how it affected everybody else. That's a beautiful mm. idea. And I do think it was highly inspired from something from above. So now I want you to talk mm. about the book and the story. <laughs> so the book itself it does kind of follow that that story in that there are four female four women runners and they've been friends since high school all quite different but they're still kind of really close and they go for this run in the morning and on the one road there's a taxi driver he's trying to cut through you know he wants to get back to the people in, in the township so that he can kind of zoot back and make extra money you know the more trips he does and he flies past them and loses control of this vehicle and kills the one woman. In the process, he loses a leg. Um, And the book then really unpacks following kind of the seven stages of grief. In each kind of chapter, I unpack each character and where they are in that phase of grief and what's happening to them. It, it sounds quite heavy, but it's very much a, a fictional read. And, um, but, but there's kind of underlying threads and tones of, of meaning in there. But yeah, each character is, is unpacked and what happens to them. And you've got, so you've got the taxi driver, his journey now, what happens, he's killed someone by mistake, but that's essentially what he's done. The three friends, what happens to them? What happens to their relationships, their friendships? The girl who's killed is like the core of the friendship. How, how does their, can their friendship still work? Um, the boyfriend of the girl that is killed, what happens to him? Like he goes a bit off the rails. Um, and then there's a woman, which is kind of everyone's favorite character because she's a bit unhinged, but she's watching. She watches as this happens and um, and what happens to her and how it affects her life, even though she doesn't know anybody, but she sees it happen. And so what happens to her? So that's primarily what the book is. I don't want to kind of yeah, give too much too away, far. but that's, yeah, that's what After You Died is all about. It's about what happens after she dies. Yeah. I just love that. I love that. And, and I also love the fact that when we were talking, you uh, re- uh, kind of re- brought up that you had a friend that had passed away had mm. taken their lives yes. and you may be going through the grieving process while you were writing and and moving through the seven stages do you think absolutely so it took i think i think my conscious <laughs> didn't want to go there and so i think my subconscious hijacked my brain and helped me put the story together in a way that I could process. And like now two years later, I can say, yeah, I was definitely working through, you know, my friend, it was a suicide, unfortunately. Um, You know, he had severe depression for many years and he just wanted to check out. And so it was, it was devastating. And he'd been a, a very close friend for years. So, so I think that, um, I did. I think that I put a lot of emotions <laughs> into each of those characters that were really heartfelt. Um, and it's kind of like only in hindsight do you really kind of realize that I didn't consciously do it. But when I look back now, it's kind of like it's all there in black and white, you know. And that's kind of I heard an author the other day say, oh, I'm always terrified that people can really see me when they read my fiction. And um, when she said that, I was like, ooh, yeah, <laughs> I totally get that. <laughs> well, you know, I was doing a lot of activities and, and things 
on my show a year ago because there was so much to do. And now I've been uh, working with artists and musicians and, you know, we're, we're virtual and everything. But I have a common thread about m- all the books it is the author is being healed by writing, writing. Definitely. Mm. I- mm, absolutely. Yeah. No, writing is a totally, it's a huge healing process and it's used by psychologists. Um, you know, it's, it's one of the, one of the hugest elements of, of healing. I think they use it in psychiatric homes. It's yeah. Um, a friend of mine who came out of, um, a alcohol binge and went, you know, he, he has gone through a writing process as well. So, um, it is, it's a, it's an amazing way to, to work through your stuff or at least start. And, and my, my clients with, they have a blocked throat chakra. I usually have Mm. them write letters and just burn them, you know, just just express yourself, get it out. And not a diary where if you pass away, someone's going to read it. This is stuff that you do not want anyone to read, (laughs) but yet it's still inside your heart or your head. And so you, you, you get it out on paper, you know, you watch the full moon and you burn it at night and it just feels like a release. But I, you know, my book, uh, I, I learned a lot about myself too, while I was writing it. And I think I just wow. think everyone should should have uh, some time, whether it's writing a song, poetry, uh, a book, especially now that mm-hmm. we have a lot of extra time. Sometimes <laughs> I'm busy, but I don't know. I think a lot of people are sitting at home in front of the television where we could be probably being more creative. Mm, absolutely. It's so easy to get caught up, especially, you know, on that wonderful little pocket computer, your mobile or cell phone, whatever you refer to it as, but that thing sucks you in and whether it's social media or, oh, I'm just reading an article or, oh my goodness, WhatsApp could chew up hours of my life. (laughs) So it's very, very easy to get stuck in, in nothing. You put it down an hour later and you're like, what have I been doing? You know? And yeah. I like when my phone you're says, uh, you're 25% lower than last week um, on, on your screen time. And I'm like, yes, thank you. Because <laughs> it is really easy to just, you know, check it every half hour, totally not be engaged with, you know, your own life. It's an addiction. Mm-hmm. So physically writing uh, or, you know, writing your own book. And, and um, I think, like again, I like musicians a lot. I love the fact that they sit down and write a song and how many songs are coming out of this. What we're going to get is like mm. is birthing babies, right? We get to see them next year. Um, new books. And you, you did. You wrote some new books. You went from yes. from adults to working uh, with tweens. You wrote three books. Yes. So how did you get that aha moment? What made you want to write with, for tweens? Okay. So um, it was. It started off as a, a friend had mentioned there was a competition um, here by one of the local publishers. They were looking for uh tween teen content that was stories based um what you have is that we've got a lot of locally produced uh picture books but then when kids kind of go into the chapter books there isn't a lot of books that are are have local stories african stories fun adventure light stuff you know not the heavy stuff and um and so i thought oh cool yeah okay that's great y'all yeah, into that and then i got stuck i was like oh my gosh, what am I going to write, you know? And so I went to the gym this time because probably the wind was blowing <laughs> and I um, hate the wind. Um, and so went to the gym and while I was now, once again, plodding, but on a treadmill, I saw this guy come into the gym and he had this like grizzly beard and these like big earrings in his ears. And I was like fascinated by him. And then as I watched him, I went, wow, you know, he looks like a modern day pirate. And then that was the light bulb moment. I mean, thank goodness he appeared when you did, right? And I was just like, that's it. Modern day pirates. What what could that be? What could that look like? How could I explore that in a book for kids? And so then dashed back home and started researching and looking up, had there actually ever been pirates in and around, you know, Southern Africa? And it was like, yes, <laughs> there was. There was this fabled town called Libertalia, which was on Madagascar, which is an island on the east coast um, of Africa. And this, um, what's a continent? I can never remember. I've heard so many differing opinions. Anyway, on Madagascar, there's a town called Libertalia. And that was apparently like a free port. 
And so you had like the Dutch East India Company coming to South Africa or Southern Africa, and you had the British, and they were all fighting as colonialists for control. Um, but there were then pirates in the ocean, obviously trying to get the goods that were coming out of this country, and then also attacking the slave ships as well. And then they would take their loot and the slaves that they freed and let them free on Madagascar and Libertalia. And so this free port was just such a stunning idea. I just loved that. So I was like, great, tech, got pirates. And then I was like, oh, pirates need treasure. And I was like, oh, okay back to Google and like, are there any treasures in Africa? And found this amazing story about a king called Lobangula. And he would have been in what is today modern um, Zimbabwe. And um, he had amassed all this ivory, uh, gold and diamonds because you'd had the beginning of gold and diamond mining in Johannesburg and further north. And there are amazing minerals up in Zimbabwe. and he had amassed this treasure and Cecil John Rhodes kind of wanted to like come up Africa and, uh, and in, on his kind of quest to go from Cape to Cairo and paint Africa red for the queen, he wanted to get Lobangula's treasure. And so he went to Bulawayo and he burnt it down in search of this treasure. And he never got any, he never found anything except a tiny silver elephant. And that was all that was ever found of this treasure. And legend has it, um, Lobangula had, you know, sent this treasure um, to be buried somewhere or et cetera, et cetera. No one has ever found it. So I was like, brilliant. Okay, cool. So took those two main concepts and a few generations and kind of to modern kids now. And then I kind of bring that all together in a modern day, you know, fancy private school in the Eastern Cape, which is, um, you know, on the East coast of South Africa. And there are schools like that there anyway. So that's not too much of a leap. And then how these kids who are descendants of these pirates and these um, uh, royalty, kind of African royalty and what happens. So, so yeah, so that's kind of what happens, but it's yeah, modern day kids with all the normal stuff, a bit of romance and yeah. And they're beautiful, they're beautiful books. And I think I just it's so funny because after I talked to you, I, I YouTubed something. I don't even know what it was. And the Celestine Prophecy movie came up. I don't know if you it's a basically about synchronicity and, and energy. And but I, 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 you know, talking to you like your energy's high and, and, you know, you're very imaginative and how that little light bulb goes off. And then you like the pirate guy walks in and it's just the universe like, you know, giving you winks from above to continue that playfulness and that creativity. And I just thought it was such a beautiful story of, you know, and you, you finished the books, yay. <laughs> you know, I mean, a lot of people yay. just live in their heads, but it's just so um, rewarding for me to see people to not only have the ideas, but to finish and show up and then, you know, go back to the top and, and, and produce again. And I, I always say, let me be productive. Because if you're just thinking about things at home and not doing anything, we're not really living life, you know? So I'm really proud of you. <laughs> it sounds yeah. crazy, but I love how oh, you do thank it. Thank you. I, I love your process. Thank you. So yeah, and the oh, books are lovely. You, man. That's great. But I, I, I want to you to give uh, your contact, but I'm going to keep you on the phone because I want to introduce you to my next guest. <laughs> so, oh, wow. So some, thank you. I'd yeah, love to meet her. Give some contact. So if people want to reach out to you or get the books. Absolutely. So they can go to my website, melinalewis.com. And there's links to Amazon uh, for all of my books on my website there. Um, alternatively, they can go onto Amazon. My adult book is under my full name, Melina Lewis. So that's After You Died uh, by Melina Lewis. And they can find that on Amazon. And then my kind of kids' books, they are Libertalia, like Liberty, but Alia. And um, those are under Mel Lewis on, on Amazon. So you can kind of, yeah, you can either go my website or direct to Amazon. And yeah, so I've got, for those books, I have got both print on demand and eBooks. So people can, yeah, get, 
get that all there. Or they can, yeah, please um, drop me an email as well, um, which you can do on my website. I'd love to hear from people, especially so far away. Um, yeah, it's very exciting to kind of be in America, but be here. <laughs> I'm really enjoying, you know, interviewing someone from Germany and Australia. And it's just been so much fun to go around the world and, and also hear what's going on, you know. And everybody, yeah. we're all in the same boat right now. We're all going through the same thing. It's just, uh, it's been really a strange year, but I'm, I'm really, really loving it right now. It's, it's, it's taking boundaries and I'm stretching them. And so this is exciting. And um, we're going to take our uh, break and then I'm going to introduce you to my next guest. You're listening to Lift Your Spirits with Dina Marie. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Again, together we fall at the end of it all. Are you feeling blocked? Are you frustrated or confused? If so, take some time to stop and step off the treadmill so you can receive the guidance and the support you need to take your life in a new direction. A client of mine called me a personal trainer for the body, the mind, and the spirit, and she added, Dina Marie does not heal you, she gives you the tools you need to heal yourself. If you're ready for a change, I'm here for you. In person or phone sessions are available by appointment. Visit dina-marie.com to connect with me today. Tired of pain relievers that do not work? At Resonant Botanicals, they believe in natural solutions, in relieving pain and anxiety. They make handcrafted hemp oil lotions and creams that relieve pain, calm the mind, relax the body, and induce a restful night's sleep naturally. Resonant Botanicals is a family-owned business with a passion for using the best plant-derived organic ingredients you can buy with confidence with their 100% money-back guarantee. To see all that they have to offer, visit ResonantBotanicals.com today. Need a day away? Indulge yourself in a sanctuary of rest at the Seaside Spa and Salon, located in historic waterfront Coopville on beautiful Whidbey Island. Seaside Spa and Salon specializes in organic spa treatments. Their goal is to create a place for you to regain balance and to uplift your spirits. Check out their website for information on spa packages and gift certificates. Visit SeasideSpaAndSalon.com or like them on Facebook to plan your day away today. Lift your spirits with us every Friday at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on 1150 a.m. KKNW Seattle. We will be introducing you to fascinating people, fun places to visit, and activities are guaranteed to lift your spirits. Miss a show? No worries, you can visit 1150kknw.com and click on our archive page or like Lift Your Spirits with Dina Marie on Facebook for upcoming guests and events. To contact me, Dina Marie, visit dina-marie.com. Thank you so much for listening. Find out the latest about your favorite shows on Alternative Talk 1150. Check out 1150kknw.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Lift Your Spirits with Dina Marie. And that singer is Amandala, and she's joining us from South Africa. Good morning. Good morning. It's such a cool synchronicity because I, you, we were talking September. I wanted to get you on the show. And it was so funny because I called you and you were there. Yes. How strange. You know, we were supposed to be in Seattle and you know, when you reach out to me, now I'm in South Africa. So it's actually perfect, you know, and it's so funny because it's evening here and it's morning there. So I, but know. I think we both had coffee. So that's good. <laughs> I need a coffee. Um, so Amandala, Mel, Mel Amandala, <laughs> I'm introducing you because we were talking, Mel. Hi. What, <laughs> Hello. What, what do you have in your house, Mel, uh, that, that was in common with the, it's called Scratch Patch. 
Yeah, um, I have a lot. You said a handful, but actually it's like a handful in every bedroom <laughs> of small, semi-precious stones all over the place because I've taken my kids to a place called the Scratch Patch here in Simonstown. And um, the kids get these little bags, they're like little plastic packets, and then they can go into like, oh, it's like an, almost like a swimming pool sized kind of stone bath and then pick up these little stones, the ones that they like, you know? And, um, and then, as I was saying, they don't, they never kind of close the bag. They kind of just shove the stones <laughs> on top until they've got this like little pile, like an ice cream pile <laughs> sticking out. And then they walk out, you know, very excited because they've got a few. The polished stones. Stones. So my children, yeah. The scratch patch. So a mandala. How did you get uh, rocks to Seattle? What's that story <laughs> real quick? Yeah, so it's Melina. I actually had a scratch patch earth mineral store in Seattle in the, in the Green Lake area for about four years. And uh, it's because my friend from Cape Town, um, such a dear friend of mine, took me to the Simonstown scratch patch and also to the one, I don't know if the one it's still open at the VA waterfront in Cape it Town. Is, is. And yeah. I just fell in love with it. And then one day we went... Um, to Victoria, BC in Canada, um, to a scratch patch over there. And I realized, oh my golly, you know, somebody had that idea to bring it over to Canada. And then I um, connected with those people and found out that they were getting their rocks from South Africa, from Simon's Town. So I couldn't sleep. Oh. I was so excited. So I opened a store in Seattle. It was the first store ever in the United States, which was on that concept. So uh, the first two years, we did so well that we moved to a bigger venue and wow. um, and we ordered our rocks from Simonstown. And it was so strange because this neighborhood where I lived in, in Seattle, West Seattle, it's quite an old air, area of Seattle. We had this huge truck, you know, that came to deliver these rocks in plastic bags, in, in like metal containers that say packed in Simonstown. It was so incredible, but this truck just couldn't even turn in the neighborhood. I always thought, <laughs> thought like, oh, it's going to take, you know, take the cars, you know, hit the cars in the street. But um, so that's how I met Dina Marie because she came to my store. And at that time I, I was teaching Reiki. I had a healing center. I also teach mm -hmm. yoga and that's how we met. So she wrote her book and she uses the stones for the book and, Wow, you know, so such a small world, you know, bringing us all together, rocks so, and yeah. minerals, so, beauty, <laughs> color. And the Celestine Prophecy is about synchronicities. And I don't know why I watched that movie, but I read the book many, many years ago. And it just it seems so playful today to have you both together and then it be so whimsical and fun. And that's, I think, what we re need right now, right, is to look up go for a run, go outside, ground yourself at the beach with your rocks or whatever. But, you know, look up and have that that synchronicity and have that that voice talk to you, that aha moment, and then just keep keep going. And I know uh, when you're writing, um, you were doing yoga, but then you, you started wanting to do music. So what, what drove you to doing music? What inspired you? Yeah, so I uh, started playing violin at the age of six. Um, so I've, I've had music all my life, um, you know, take take violin lessons so I was classically trained in violin and then when I went to university I took extra subjects in music so I studied law um, and I and I did singing as well I, I, and um, so I never thought I'll, I'll do music as a profession I just always thought it's like you know something that's sort of on the side and then when we moved to Seattle every second person is either a yoga teacher or in software or are in a band so I played in several bands in Seattle and um, everybody else's music and I loved it. I mean, I played violin in a punk rock band, in a golf band, and I played, um, you know, in, in several other other bands in Seattle until, you know, I was part of a yoga community and I was always, I always had music, sort of like a, sort of like more music chanting with my harmonium and sort of like more spiritual you know inclination of, of making music to, that uplift so i made actually two um albums on my own that wasn't like professional studio albums which is very yogic you know it was sort of like new age music and um then from there i sent some of the music uh, to a producer in seattle and then we collaborated on an album together and that was my first uh, studio release and then from there it just grew 
so now this one is my third studio professional studio release so yeah it's i just i feel so blessed because you know it's like you're not really looking for it but it just finds you you know that inspiration finds you do you play guitar yeah. I do. I, I taught myself guitar. So I play guitar and I, I play piano, which is actually also an interesting story. I did piano like for a year um, in primary school, but I was very scared of my teacher um, because, um, yeah, I, I'm in my hometown. So I probably won't, won't talk too much about my teacher because people in my hometown probably know who that teacher was. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was very scared, scared of my teacher. And um, so I quit, you know, in, in, in my first, you know, only, only doing it for a year and then when I you know was an adult I, I always play by ear but I, I could read notes but you know playing violin you only read one line of music so you know piano you always have to read the left hand and right hand so I was just so lazy I just thought oh, I'll just play by ear and so that that's sort of how it happened and then I also play guitar um, I think if you play violin you can almost play anything you know so I, I, I I'm not playing it well but I I I make it look like I can play it. <laughs> I don't know if that's well, and and, and uh, you reached out to me in September, and I don't know where September and October went. Just literally, I was super busy, and then the timing, the timing was so perfect <laughs> because I, I put your I do I do this a lot. I put people's names on a on a pa- piece of paper, and it turns out to be perfect. I mean, right now this is perfect, and the thing is, I think it was perfect that I listened to it in the last week because. Tell tell the listeners about the, the album. Yeah, so the album was also for me a, a personal journey. So this album is called Stronger. So all the songs that I brought together on this album is, is songs. I'm just getting goosebumps even talking about it. It's, um, it's songs that encourage us, that connects, that um, helps people to feel empowered or... Um, so the whole song, all the songs is, is like a journey, you know, and if you listen from the, the song sequence, and nobody does that anymore, but I know you said you'll listen from the beginning to the end, you can hear that story built, you know, from the journey where she starts to the end, the final song is the, it's a titled song of the album, Stronger, but all the songs are strong songs that encourage us and, and you know, guides people sort of to that inner journey and to their own inner intuition. And I think it was just perfect for this time because I listened to it and then I get a, a I feel better after I've listened through, through, through all the songs. And for me, it was a year ago that I made a huge change in my life, left one island, moved another, let go of Kauai. All these things, I, all my books were gone. And it's like, it's a brand, I'm in a one year. So it's a brand new, be born again, baby, <laughs> me. But I, I landed on Woodby Island. I get to be with Mother Earth every day, all the time. I'm around the most amazing human beings and community. And it was so hard to let go. But as I was, you know, listening from beginning to end, it just, I was crying at the end. It's, and that's the thing about a perfect album is it is telling us a story, storytelling, um, and it's so important for us to keep telling stories and for us to sit back and just close our eyes and listen. Um, I just, I really, I just, you know, timing. It was beautiful. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Dina Marie. And, you know, it's just so wonderful to see you. You know, I'm just happy that the Zoom is, uh, you know, I can see you. It's so nice. And I, you know, it's it's been a long time. So, and it's, I feel like we've been friends forever. You know, it just, it's, Our paths goes yeah. back so long, you know, and we've seen each other through so many activities and journeys. And you were sitting in this chair, I think it was four and a half years ago. Uh, with you, you just had your album and the beauty, you were so sweet. We we show up and she has a bag full of rocks for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I'm like, God, this is like heaven. It was so amazing. And but it was that it was East West Bookshop, which is our our new age kind of, you know, bookshop. Ravenna used to be, you know, Roosevelt. That whole area was just so um, God's gift to me because that's where my book kind of came about. That's where, you know, your your rocks helped me figure out how I was going to do the little rock sets. And uh, so we're all it's a woven web, you know, and and we're all Mm. woven and weaved together. And Melina, just talking to you the other day and remembering or how I have to exercise every day because that's where I get my inspiration, uh, whether it's just a walk or a trot, because mm. <laughs> we can't go to the gyms anymore because they're closed. But, you know, getting outside, taking that run. And then when you're, you're 
the inspiration drops down into your third eye, you know, into your crown chakra, you know, talk to yourself, play with it, you know, start creating and, and, and ha- have your mind as a paintbrush. And both of you, as art, you're both artists, you know, you're creative. Uh, and it just makes me so happy to be around um, human beings that are, are inspiring other people to be creative human beings. So thank you, ladies. And you're both so beautiful. I do love Zoom. Well, and, and thank you for helping us to get the word out because yeah. that's the other thing, you know, making art, writing a book, making music, you know, it's, it's such a creative process. And then in the end, you sit with a, a beautiful product and now you have to get it out. You want to get the word out. It's like baking a cake, uh, like a feast for everybody. And there's nobody. And you want to let people know, well, come, you know, come join with me in the feast, you know. So people, uh, you know, having us on your show today, Dina, you are so instrumental helping artists to get the word out. <laughs> so thank you so much. Well, and mm-hmm. I, I have to say what happened to me is I got 7,000 books and then the, the b- books dropped off at my house and I'm like, oh, God, I don't think about what I'm going to do with them. And then I went back to running or back to doing the jog, you know, the inspiration. And they said, sometimes they said, give it away. One uh, year they said, give it away for a year. And that's how I got to Kauai for the last eight years because I gave it away to a young man who was having problems. His mom owned a, a spiritual center so I went eight years to Hawaii, and they had this expo. So for two days, I did shaka readings, and I was paid, and I did my, my books and uh, talks and things. And those are the people that housed me, fed me, took me on kayak. <laughs> you know, they became my family, and they're still my family. So we have to go back to the top, ask Spirit, how can I get my book or my music out there? And, and you'll never, it just, it might be something you've never, you would never think of, because it's, it's Spirit helping you uh, mm. be more... Um, Gosh, how do you say that? It's 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 more magical, because I, yeah. I I've been talking to some authors and such, and that's where they get the writer's block when they have to get out there and start, you know, forcing. How do we do that? So we have to be so careful because we can't lose our creative juices trying to mm-hmm. force something. So maybe just go back to the top, ask spirit, and then it'll come through with synchronicities or something playful. Um, but I do. And you gave it away. You know, I think that's such a key thing, like not giving it away in that sense, but sort of letting it go. You know, it's mm-hmm. like you, you, you raised a child, you did all that you could, you, you, you took it to music lessons, you, you know, it's like you create the project and then you just let it go and you trust, you know, you, you work, you, you're still promoting it, but you are sort of letting it go and trusting that, you know, you will find the right synchronicities to help you along the path. Like for me, it just feels like then you don't feel like it's my book or it's my music or it's, it's my creation. Now it's everybody's, you know, um, mm-hmm. and everybody's going to benefit and as, as they benefit, you benefit. So I, I think it is such a learning curve for an artist just to let go of what you have created. And that's what Mm, 2020's taught me is to keep moving. Never sit in it. You know, you basically, the spirit is constantly throwing beautiful pieces of whatever, of of polished stones right in front of you. But if we go back to that favorite one way back there and hang out with it. So, you know, just keep staying in the present moment. Keep setting your intentions, being very grateful and just keep moving, keep moving forward. It's, we have to, we can't go in the, we can't go back anymore. So uh, I just... (laughs) It's think. a spiritual path, don't you think, <laughs> Dina? It's it's like if you sit and you think, well, now I've got the answer. I've now I've reached enlightenment, or now <laughs> I know, you know, now I've found the right, the truth, you know. Then you know you're already you lost on the path, you know. Just keep going, and 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 also um, you get better at it, you know. I don't think worse or better, but you know, I can't think of the right English word. But you get you get uh, a little bit more wise. Well, we were talking mm-hmm. about the multiverse, and we're all singing different songs, and we're all gravitated towards maybe someone who has that same resonance or energy, and mm-hmm. nothing's good or bad. We're all just living and learning and, and, and hopefully playing along the way. But I do think your chakras are your instrument. So we keep ourselves tuned up, then we play better, and then maybe we gravitate towards someone who, like I was thinking, you know, a lot of people don't like to be in the woods. They don't want to sit on the beach. A lot of people are happy doing something else. I know a young man, he had the week off, and he loved playing video games. Nothing's good or bad, but would I spend a week playing video games? No. <laughs> so, But it's none of my business, and just allowing everyone just to be and, and 
you do what you love and then you gravitate towards that energy. So it's a, it's a I love saying a multiverse because we're all musicians. We're all playing. Just how well tuned are you? <laughs> so I don't know. So uh, yeah. I just want to say um, a little bit more about the album. Um, there's a few songs that really talk to me. Is Can you say a few words of, of, of a few of the songs? Just, I don't know. Yes, I think today in, sh in the show, you're going to feature two of the songs. So thank you. Uh, the song that you, the two songs you're playing today is Until and um, Stronger, which is the title track. So maybe I should just talk about those two. That would be awesome. Um, Yes, so until is um, three, four times. So it's a, it's a, it's more like an easy on the ear uh, song, but it's a song about you know um, people that are getting a divorce or people that you know something leaving your life. You know, it can be any situation of of a loss, and we maybe there's some unfinished business, and um, well, that was the idea when I the song was was written. Um, so that, but it's never lost. So even if you feel like you're losing, you're not losing ever anything because, um, we are gaining as we're losing in wisdom. And then, you know, in the song, it's also about connecting again on different levels. You know, we are always connected, not just on the physical level, but we are connected on the spiritual level or emotional level. So that song has, has that all, all, you know, that whole storyline. Um, and it's a beautiful song, and um, I was fortunate to um, have a wonderful singer from Seattle, Sebron Hansen, sing a sort of duet with me on that song. So he's an excellent vocalist. And then um, I had another friend, uh, Michael Corson. He's now in Colombia, and he um, helped craft the lyrics because, you know, it's always nice to have people sort of overlook not every song of mine, but that one particular he had his, you know, had good um you know helped me a lot with that so um and then the song stronger that one is sort of more classical and i think with that one it was really for me to be stronger singing in a higher vocal range so i was more brave doing that song i didn't know if i if i wanted to, to sing it to sort of challenge myself and then it actually came out beautiful and in the end it's like a chant with the cellos and the drums you know building in a chant and I think um I love writing songs like that because then it sticks it sticks to my um sort of my thought process so it helps me on days when I maybe need my own therapy uh, to listen to that song and, and there's nothing like I produced an album and wrote the songs and the book and there's nothing more exciting than something tangible, you know, something tangible, not just thinking all the time. So, again, to listen to it and, and have the collaboration. That's another thing. When you are writing a book, you get to the point where it needs to be um, not just published, but you have to have someone edit it. You give your baby to someone else. Maybe they don't like it. Maybe they do. Maybe they try to change parts of it that you really are. Your convic conviction is, I really have to keep this in my book. Or so it's like working well with other people. And then when you birth the baby, I'm, I have a book in my hand. <laughs> your book, Mel. But it's just like when <laughs> I it's love done, that. Can I see that again? It's uh, so tangible. It's wonderful. And it's just so cool that I can see. And I'm again learning zoom and it's just so fun to to visit with mel in africa on an afternoon while it's her evening <laughs> and it's just it's so <laughs> i'm just really enjoying this and i have to thank jonathan because he's bringing so many amazing um empowered publicity people into my life these amazing authors um and you're you may be doing something with uh, anthony manna soon mel yes hopefully yes yeah. yes as soon as he's well yes yeah. so he was on the uh show two weeks ago and he he got the virus and so I've been in contact with him but he trots just like us he likes to go to the woods and run <laughs> and he, I know he's missing that right now but he's he's doing better and, and he's at home so I just I'm so glad that you guys are going to do something together and uh, we're going to end the show today uh, with the song um, Stronger and the new out uh, release that's the title track Stronger and uh, we've been playing through the breaks the other song, which I just forgot you until until, until. Yep. I just I just feel so blessed right now. And again, your um, album, your new release has been basically you just told my life in the last year. And how whimsical of a wink was that for me to just let go of the past, 
be not know, have any clue where I was going to live, by the way. It was like a month or so just literally staying at people's houses not knowing because I was supposed to go to Kauai. And that did not work out at all. And now I know I can't go there at all and visit my favorite people. So thank God for Zoom. Thank God for Facebook. Thank God that I can um, get a messenger message from a mandala. And then we can reconnect and weave this web from Africa to Seattle. I think it's amazing. <laughs> yes. And can I just say one more thing? Sure. This is from the album. There was musicians from Seattle and South Africa that played on this album. And it was recorded in Seattle at Eric Studios and finished in um, Stellenbosch at Sunset Recording Studio in South Africa. So I love to collaborate over two countries. I'm Very just cool. so blessed to know you both. Thank you for being on the show. And um, let's see, one more Hello, time. That's so nice to meet you. And, and yes. Amandala, Am- Am- what's your website? Um, AmandalaMusic.com. And I invite everyone back next week for more people, places, and activities that will lift their spirits.
Thank you for listening to the I Work For Me podcast. I hope you enjoyed this interview and that you feel inspired to take your idea and business to the next level, not only for yourself, but for fellow South Africans too. Please listen in weekly for interviews with more interviews with South Africa's most inspiring people and connect with me on Facebook or Instagram at Melina Lewis Author or on YouTube at Melina Lewis or if you don't mind, consider supporting the show for a few rand a month by finding me on Patreon at Melina Lewis. Have a great week and namaste. Namaste.